Whole. Now, before listening to this audiobook, you must have read it beforehand in order to revise effectively. And now, you can subscribe to our Instagram handle and all links given in description. 5.5 The flower The flower is the reproductive unit in the angiosperms. It is meant for sexual reproduction. A typical flower has four different kinds of whorls arranged successively on the swollen end of the stalk or pedicel, called alamus or receptacle. These are calyx, corolla, androecium and gynoecium. Calyx and corolla are accessory organs, while androecium and gynoecium are reproductive organs. In some flowers like lily, the calyx and corolla are not distinct and are termed as perianth. When a flower has both androecium and gynoecium, it is bisexual. A flower having either only stamens or only carpels is unisexual. In symmetry, the flower may be actinomorphic, radial symmetry, or zygomorphic, bilateral symmetry. When a flower can be divided into two equal radial halves in any radial plane passing through the center, it is said to be actinomorphic, for example, mustard, datura, chili. When it can be divided into two similar halves only in one particular vertical plane, it is zygomorphic, for example, pea, gulmoga, bean, kasa. A flower is asymmetric, irregular, if it cannot be divided into two similar halves by any vertical plane passing through the center, as in canna. A flower may be trimerous, tetramerous or pentamerous when the floral appendages are in multiple of three, four or five, respectively. Flowers with bracts reduced leaf found at the base of the pedicel are called bracteate and those without bracts, abracteate. Based on the position of calyx, Corolla and androecium in respect of the ovary on the alamus, the flowers are described as hypogenous, perigenous and epigenous, figure 5.13. In the hypogenous flower the gynoecium occupies the highest position while the other parts are situated below it. The ovary in such flowers is said to be superior, for example, mustard, china rose and brinjal. If gynoecium is situated in the center and other parts of the flower are located on the rim of the thalamus almost at the same level, it is called perigenous. The ovary here is said to be half inferior, for example, plum, rose, peach. In epigenous flowers, the margin of thalamus grows upward enclosing the ovary completely and getting fused with it. The other parts of flower rise above the ovary. Hence, the ovary is said to be inferior as in flowers of guava and cucumber, and the ray florets of sunflower. 5.5.1 Parts of a flower Each flower normally has four floral whorls, viz, calyx, corolla, androecium and gynoecium, figure 5.14. 5.5.1.1 Calyx The calyx is the outermost whorl of the flower and the members are called sepals. Generally, sepals are green, leaf-like and protect the flower in the bud stage. The calyx may be gamospelous, sepals united, or polysepalous, sepals free. 5.5.1.2 Corolla Corolla is composed of petals. Petals are usually brightly colored to attract insects for pollination. Like calyx, corolla may also be gametopetalous, petals united, or polypetalous, petals free. The shape and color of corolla vary greatly in plants. Corolla may be tubular, bell-shaped, funnel-shaped or wheel-shaped. Estivation, the mode of arrangement of sepals or petals in floral bud with respect to the other members of the same whorl is known as estivation. The main types of estivation are valvate, twisted, embricate and maxillary. Figure 5.15. When sepals or petals in a whorl just touch one another at the margin, without overlapping, as in calotropes, it is said to be valvate. If one margin of the appendage overlaps that of the next one and so on as in china rose, ladies finger and cotton, it is called twisted. If the margins of sepals or petals overlap one another but not in any particular direction as in cassa and gulmoga, the estivation is called imbricate. In pea and bin flowers, there are five petals, the largest, standard, overlaps the two lateral petals, wings, which in turn overlap the two smallest anterior petals, keel, this type of estivation is known as vexillary or papillonaceous. 
5.5.1.3 Androecium Androecium is composed of stamens. Each stamen which represents the male reproductive organ consists of a stalk or a filament and an anther. Each anther is usually bilobed and each lobe has two chambers, the pollen sacs. The pollen grains are produced in pollen sacs. A sterile stamen is called staminode. Stamens of flower may be united with other members such as petals or among themselves. When stamens are attached to the petals, they are epipetalous as in brinchl, or epiphyllous when attached to the perianth as in the flowers of lily. The stamens in a flower may either remain free, polyandrous, or may be united in varying degrees. The stamens may be united into one bunch or one bundle, monodelphus, as in china rose, or two bundles, diadelphus, as in pea, or into more than two bundles, polyadelphus, as in citrus. There may be a variation in the length of filaments within a flower, as in salvia and mustard. 5.5.1.4 Gynoecium Gynoecium is the female reproductive part of the flower and is made up of one or more carpels. A carpel consists of three parts namely stigma, style and ovary. Ovary is the enlarged basal part, on which lies the elongated tube, the style. The style connects the ovary to the stigma. The stigma is usually at the tip of the style and is the receptive surface for pollen grains. Each ovary bears one or more ovules attached to a flattened, cushion-like placenta. When more than one carpel is present, they may be free, as in lotus and rose, and are called apocarpus. They are termed syncarpus when carpels are fused, as in mustard and tomato. After fertilization, the ovules develop into seeds and the ovary matures into a fruit. Placentation, the arrangement of ovules within the ovary is known as placentation. The placentation are of different types namely, marginal, axile, parietal, basal, central and free central, figure 5.16. In marginal placentation the placenta forms a ridge along the ventral suture of the ovary and the ovules are born on this ridge forming two rows, as in P. When the placenta is axial and the ovules are attached to it in a multilocular ovary, the placenta E and is said to be axile, as in China rose tomato and lemon. In parietal placentation, the ovules develop on the inner wall of the ovary or on peripheral part. Ovary is one-chambered but it becomes two-chambered due to the formation of the false septum, for example, mustard and argemone. When the ovules are born on central axis and septa are absent, as in dianthus and primrose the placentation is called free central. In basal placentation, the placenta develops at the base of ovary and a single ovule is attached to it, as in sunflower, marigold, 